Many thanks for coming back and excellent, highly motivating feedback for tutorial number one. This is tutorial number two about a fast engine startup procedure that brings you up in the air. Something that in real life doesn't exist. The only way to do it should be always the checklist. They may be vary from company to company for some operational reasons, but in real life it's one of your lifesavers. In DCS it is very cheap to crash and the risk of getting hurt is pretty small. Except you're so excited about your flying and get a heart attack because of that. So a quick startup guide or video may only contain the necessary steps. However, that will be a lousy decision too. Any wrong or careless doing your catch up at the beginning is hard to correct in the future and bad habits may follow you a lifetime. So this video guide shows not the fastest way to start up, but the let's say most practicable way to quick start and should be easy to memorize. Before the actual startup, we take a closer look to the instruments crucial for the process and you have to watch out for. There are the three smaller gauges below the engine and rotor RPM indicator. On top, the torque meter, important during a flight but not during startup. Second, and essential for startup, the gas producer or N1 gauge. This instrument shows the RPM of the first turbine stage. During startup, it will, electrical driven and activated by the pilot when pressing the engine starter button, suck and compress fresh air into the turbine. The airflow within the turbine drives the second engine stage, which is connected through the main gearbox with the main rotor. When indicating 10% and 1, the amount of air passing through the turbine should be strong enough to move the main rotor. If not, the friction within the drive system is for any reason too high and you need to abandon the startup process. At 10% gas producer N1, fuel flows into the engine and gets ignited. That's the point where the third instrument gets crucial. The exhaust temperature gauge or TOT, turbine outlet temperature, also known as T4, indicates the temperature in the hot section of the turbine. Specific heat levels are not allowed to exceed for particular times or under any circumstances. If you do everything in the right way, you will not exceed any temperature limits in DCS during startup. So let's begin with the quick startup procedure. First, we check the free movement of our controls. Cyclic forward, backward and sidewards. Pedals deflection, full left and full right. Collective, full up and full down as well. That also makes sense in a simulator because it ensures you all of your USB devices connected and functioning correctly. Use the mouse, scroll wheel or the page up and page down button on your keyboard to fully open the twisted grip throttle at the collective and set it back to ground idle. This is highly important that otherwise your throttle, thrust lever or any kind of power control will not work. Let's go to the left row in the overhead console and switch on the anti-collision light. This is a sign for any aircraft, vehicle or ground crew around that you intend engine startup. In the right row, we switch the AC power rotary switch to AC phase. Right in front of them, the DC power to main generator on and close the flip cover. The voltmeter rotary switch set to ESS bus. Battery switch in the lower left corner to on. Low RPM and engine out warning horn starts yelling. To switch it off, we refer to the middle console below. The switch located left of the yellow main fuel switch. After shut off the warning horns, we switch that fuel switch to on. And you hear the sound of the fuel pumps pumping fuel up to the engine. In the upper left corner of the caution lights panel, we switch the test switch to test and reset. Next, right in front of the instrument panel, we switch the hydraulic control and the force trim switch to on. Left of the red flip cover, we switch the chip detector switch to forward and backward. 
This is not necessary, but helps you not to forget to set the Rotari switch to his left to stand by. The transponder itself is not working in DCS, but setting him to stand by extinguished the related warning light in the warning light panel. In real life, you or one of your crew shout out the door clear for finally warn everybody may go around the aircraft that you intend to start the engine right now. Now we focus on the gas producer gauge and one and press the engine starter button. At 10 to 12 percent N1, the main rotor should start slowly moving and fuel get injected and ignited in the hot section of the turbine. Now the exhaust outlet temperature is also rising. If this is your first startup and throttle is at ground idle, in DCS nothing gets wrong during startup and above 30 percent N1 you can release the starter button. The engine keeps turning by itself and stabilizes at 68 to 72 percent N1. Next, we set an inverter switch in the overhead console to main on and the starter generator switch next to the battery switch to stand by. Check the magnetic compass at the right of the instrument panel and set a radio compass in front of you accordingly to them. That's it. You may open throttle anytime you want to flight idle and let's go. Of course, there are still many other things to do when in a mission. Adjust the barometric altimeter, set the radar altimeter and switch radios on. When it's dark, position and landing lights have to be on as well. However, that's maybe part of another video. Next time we get a closer look to the UH-1 specifics and what's essential to know before taking off. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, you know what you have to do. If you like the channel, please subscribe right now and recommend us to your friends. See you next time and always happy landings.